Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special breaking news edition of Encounter Today. There's been historic hearings today at the Supreme Court as the state of Mississippi is defending an abortion restriction law that challenges Roe versus Wade. I've got a special guest with me, and we are live tonight. I want to hear from you in the comments. We may even be answering your questions. We may read your comments live on the air, so make sure you tell us in the comments where you're watching from, and I've got a special announcement concerning the Terminal, which I believe is the premier New Year's Eve prophetic event in the country. So, uh, honestly, it's it's just mind-boggling to even say that, that God will allow us to be a part of something like that. But first, before I introduce our guests, before we dive into all of this, we want to hear from you. Where are you watching from? Evan, where do we have people watching from tonight? Yes, we've got Texas, South Carolina, California, Kansas, Michigan, people from all over the nation. And I've seen a few from out of the state as well. And this is not just an American matter, so I'm excited to see how this goes tonight. Yeah, we've got Grace in Dublin, Ireland watching with us. Grace, it's good to have you on Encounter today as well. So keep writing in the comments. We're going to be monitoring those. Let us know where you're watching from and let us know what you're believing God for or where your position is on these issues we want to hear from you and listen ain't no algorithm going to help a show like this so we don't need anybody else's help we are the body of christ we are the largest special interest group in the country and in the world and we got the power of the holy ghost and the power of agreement so hit that thumbs up button and hit the share button so we can get real truth real information to equip you for what's ahead. Lots of stuff to share with you tonight, but first let me introduce our guest. She is probably our favorite pro-life activist. She is a tremendous voice for righteousness, not just in the United States, but also in Canada. I want you to welcome in the comments, Matea Murta. Matea, you still with us there? I am still here. I'm so grateful to be here, too. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been way too long, and uh, we, we loved having you previously on the program as well as on the podcast. Uh, your experience and your passion for these issue, issues is invaluable. So in a minute, I want you to share a little bit about where we are um, concerning what's happening now at the Supreme Court for Roe versus Wade. But let me say this first before we go back to Matea. Many of you have been asking in the comments about the terminal. I saw someone asking whether or not it's just live or we'll be streaming it. For those who don't know, we've got Lou Engel, Jeremiah Johnson, we've got Troy Brewer, Larry and Mercedes Sparks, Parker and Jesse Green, um, and guess who else? Emma Stark is going to be joining with us as well. December 31st, January 1st, January 2nd, six services. You have to go to ncrevival.com. And this is not in a mega building, only a few hundred gathered in a small room because we're believing not for uh, quantity. We're believing for quality. We're believing that these prophetic voices will come together and that it will be as the sound of many waters that when they speak, the church will turn. Listen, before we can turn America back to God, we've got to turn the church back to Christ. Come on, somebody in the comments, write amen. Before we can turn America back to God, we've got to turn the church back to Christ. And that's really the, the focus behind this event. If you want more information, go to ncrevival.com. It's by registration. If you want to make sure that you have seating, Again, seating is extraordinarily limited. And yes, when you go to register, there is a there is a way to register for online viewing. If you're not able to get here, then you can purchase registration to be online with us live. And again, this event is not for the masses. We want a core remnant of pe believers who are ready to stand in faith together and see the church turn back to Christ and turn back to the gospel. So again, that's ncrevival.com. And now we've got Matea back with us. Now, Matea, a lot of news happening today. A lot's been happening. Give us kind of the overview of what we're seeing right now with the Supreme Court. Of course. So today I'm so excited about this case because we're getting a direct review of Roe versus Wade through the case called Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. So again, like you stated, this is addressing the constitutionality of a Mississippi state law that would prohibit abortions being obtained after 15 weeks gestation. So today was the oral argumentation of this 
this case, Dobbs versus Jackson. And we're going to see this case come out a result, uh, a decision made by the Supreme Court in June of 2022. So today was the oral argumentation. Lots was happening outside of the Supreme Court today as well. Uh, there were so many protesters and demonstrators. I was really excited to see so many young people, so many faith groups come together in defense of uh, life, of addressing this specific issue. And they were there on site at the same time. Uh, it's very funny to watch because there's this separation, this barrier um, between the two sides, pro-life and, and pro-abortion. The pro-abortion side, you saw women taking abortion pills right on the spot. You saw uh, an mm -hmm. altar, a satanic altar placed right outside the Supreme Court where there were um, fake um, art artificial almost sacrifices taking place and candles and flowers being laid down. It was, it was very, very dark and very dreary. And yet you saw the rejoicing over life on the other side. So that's what was happening today. The argumentation um, of this case is directly striking at the heart of Roe versus Wade, uh, which in 1973 legalized abortion in all 50 states in the United States, as well as it strikes at another case which came about in 1992. And that case was Planned Parenthood versus Casey. And that essentially guaranteed the right to abortion and backed. It was like an undergirding of Roe versus Wade. So we will see the end of abortion. And I'm so excited because we get this review of Roe versus Wade and it is long past due. Well, it's interesting to see the difference in support. I've heard reports that um, there were actually more pro-life uh, demonstrators out there than there were, which is a very unusual sight to see. But when you look at the comparison, generally speaking, when you see Satan on one side of an issue, I would go to the other side of the issue. I would too, all yeah. the time. <laughs> but this issue really is, and, and maybe before I get to that, can you tell us a little bit about the Mississippi law that's being challenged here at the Supreme Court? Absolutely. So it all has to do with viability. Mm. So lots of different states across the U.S. have set different markers of viability with regards to different pro-life uh, laws. And so at this point, the 15 weeks uh, gestational um, is basically where Mississippi was drawing their line. So they're saying after 15 weeks, women in Mississippi are not going to be able to access abortion. Uh, and we know at 15 weeks gestation, a baby can already suck her thumb, she can yawn, all her organs are developed, uh, and, and she's thinking and all these different things. This is a human being, at, at conception, there is a human being created. This this is just 15 weeks, while our others, um, other states have come to 24 weeks or 21 weeks and and viability legally a legal definition is can this child survive outside of the womb and so the the blanket with roe versus wade was 28 weeks well that was way back in 1973 here we are in 2021 we know so much more about fetal development yes. uh prenatal uh, prenatal excuse me embryology and so younger and younger we're seeing these children being born i just saw a story come out from live action of 20 21 week year old, uh, excuse me, week year old uh, child being born and surviving. So that child was 21 weeks viability. So the, the age continues to go younger and younger. And as we develop with science, our healthcare gets better. Um, we're going to see that age drop even more significantly, which again is what is striking at the heart of Roe versus Wade through this case, Dobbs versus Jackson. Well, we certainly want to follow the science and the science is, yes, is, is growing and advancing in favor of the pro-life cause. But this, there is an issue with viability and this could be something that kind of sticks in the crawl of a lot of, of the Supreme Court judges who are having to rule on this case because viability is, I don't, I don't know of subjective is the word, but as you said, it is changing. And as a matter of fact, the viability of a child in a poorly run hospital in the middle of the ghetto uh, mm -hmm. who's born in abject poverty is different than the viability of the child of a wealthy person in one of the best hospitals in the country. And so is this going to be a real issue as far as the judge, judge's ruling on viability? Is that going to help or hurt us? So, so the, the one question that the Supreme Court agreed, <clears throat> excuse me, on this case to take it and make a decision, a ruling on, is are all pre-viability prohibitions on elective abortions unconstitutional? That's, that's a lot of big words, but basically, um, 
can states create laws that prohibit the access to abortion before a child is viable? Hmm. So again, before a child can 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 survive outside of uh, its its mother's Which, womb. Which, of course, is is so ridiculous because a child isn't viable when they're six months old. When they're six months old, exactly. they still need they're their mother dependent. to survive. Yeah, they're always dependent. Yes, and and. I actually take issue with the issue of viability because I think it's the wrong question to be yes. asking. I believe, is this a human being or is it not? I think that's the better question here that should be asked. But again, the Supreme Court is is making determination on pre-viability prohibition to elective abortion, which there are already SCOTUS cases, excuse me, SCOTUS is Supreme Court of the United States. SCOTUS cases currently state that there is a constitutional right to obtaining an abortion until a preborn child is viable. That's the key. It's all about the language. So um, at some point in time, when Roe versus Wade is struck down, we can then go ahead and create more um, prohibitions to abortion being obtained based upon, is this a human person, which could completely and utterly obliterate abortion access. One of my concerns in addition to that is that these judges may not rule on the basis of women's rights or on the rights of the unborn, that they would rule basically on the effect their ruling will have on the mob, on the media backlash. How concerned are we now that this that this is being it's more than politicized it's popularized may be a better word where judges are afraid of causing a backlash afraid of the mom how how is that going to play into this it shouldn't play a role in this it shouldn't but it could it absolutely could we've seen this time and time again i mean the most uh famous or infamous, however you want to look at it, case that we just saw was with Kyle Rittenhouse. We saw the jurors and, and even the judge have various um, <laughs> individuals threaten them and their families. That should not be a, a determining factor as to how a judge or a jury would rule. So my hope, my prayer is that we pray over these individuals and that they do rule based upon the law, based upon the constitutionality of this. And, and when cases get to the Supreme Court level, they're always controversial. They're always high stakes, and the Supreme Court justices know this. Um, but when it comes to abortion, it is a very hot topic. And so I'm praying over their safety, but I do not believe that necessarily it will be as big of a factor as it could be on the on a maybe a state level. Yeah, hopefully everything's not devolving into an American Idol popularity contest based on how many people tweet about a certain issue. But let me go back to viability for those who are watching. And those of you that are watching, I pray that this is blessing you. What we want to do is we want to we want to remove ourselves from the partisanship and the divide that's currently in the nation. And we just want to give you information. We want to equip you with the facts you need to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. And I don't, Evan, are you seeing any questions or comments that before before I dig deeper into this that you're that you want to address? Well, I think what I'm seeing most of in the chat, which is hopeful, is people are putting Bible verses in the chat, which means we're getting back to what we need to get back to the Word of God. And I'm excited about that. I just I just like the Book of Leviticus, so I, I love this topic and the Book of Leviticus. So I'm excited to see what happens. <laughs> well, I, Becky That's says I, I heard today the court said they lack new evidence of science. Can we get evidence mm -hmm. that a baby is human to the court? Uh, good to see Felix, by the way, watching from Nigeria with us as well. Felix, it's good to have you with us. Now, listen, I want to talk about viability because this is becoming a dominant talking point um, from the left and from those who are sympathetic to a woman's right to choose as they frame it. So viability, what is the answer that the Christian should give? And you kind of started into this a minute ago when that comes up. It's not a human if it's not viable. What's the proper response to that? Hmm. It's a very, that's a very good question. We see at the beginning of time, God created life and he set human life apart as sacred and he blessed it above all the rest of his creation. And so we should also have the exact same view of human life, which points to science. When does human life begin? Human life begins at that very moment of conception. So at that moment of time, we should have we should place as much value on that 
pre-born life at conception as we do as when that child is nine months and, and being born and, and that child who turns into a teenager and 20 years old and 50 years old and so on, that, that life has so such significant value that I think as Christians, we need to get back to, as Evan was saying, you're seeing lots of scriptures, we're getting back to what we need to get back to. I think we need to start seeing human life once again through the eyes of our creator and not through the eyes of our culture. So that's, that's how I would personally address that. And, and God calls us to protect the vulnerable, to speak mm -hmm. up for those who cannot speak for themselves. It literally states in the word, those who are being led along to death, that we're, those are staggering towards death, we're supposed to pull them back. And we're supposed to seek justice for those who cannot. So, so we have we have a very clear obligation that we and, and across that we're supposed to pick up and carry. Uh, and we're supposed to be that voice. Jesus came and set us free. He came and saved us. We have an obligation as well to to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And again, hold those back who are being led away to death. Yeah, I want to be in a culture, and when I when I talk with people, I, I really try to listen to them. I, I try to put myself in a position to be able to clearly articulate their position in a way that they would recognize and appreciate so that they know that I've heard them, that I've been listening to them. And my response to them generally is this. I want to live in a culture that values human life. And if you don't have the standard of life begins at conception, for example, and if you go to viability, then you're looking at a position this last year. We saw many people in the hospital on ventilators. They are not, by definition, viable on their own, but many of them pulled through and came out of it. Is it because they were on a ventilator that we should no longer preserve preserve their life. So viability is not a standard that you can maintain across the mm -hmm. board. Only by respecting life from the moment of conception to the moment they're put into the grave can you maintain a culture that respects all life. And that's why the abortion issue, Matea, is so central. It seems like this is the, the bellwether issue. This is the canary in the coal mine. When you're speaking with mm -hmm. someone, you can almost predict every political stance they have based on their answer on the abortion question. Why do you think that is? Oh, another good question. To be honest, when you look at the issue of abortion in today's context, um, so many people are driven by emotion. And, and no longer can you just look at, Jordan Peterson even talks about this in some of his books, you can't just look at society nowadays and think, oh my gosh, everybody is going to have a logical, common sense determination and base their opinions off of that. And most people are going to be driven by their emotion. And so when you see popular culture, whether it's in TV, movies, uh, in your music, what people read, uh, Pop, pop culture in general is probably one of the biggest drivers of it, is they promote this message of being pro-abortion and women's liberation and see that from the politics to the culture. So I think that's why most people are driven towards having this pro-abortion stance is because of what they feed on. And it's even seeped into the church. What what, in, what Christians are feeding off of. A lot of people are getting more, more talking points from the world than truth from the word of God and making, making determinations off of that. So I, I do believe when you look at the popular culture, it's not just abortion, it's human sexuality, it's issues uh, pertaining to all issues of life, euthanasia, um, whether it's gun rights, whether it's property rights, whether it's stances on communism, socialism, and every other ism, uh, I do believe it's because of what people are being fed uh, through their screens. And I, I, at the end of the day, we even know through scripture, what you put before your eyes and put into your ears, it's going to impact your soul and your heart. And out of your heart flows life and, and your actions. And so um, I, that's that's for me what I do see from, from a policy perspective as someone who writes policy. Um, that's That's what I'm seeing at this current stage in our world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a big announcement I want to share with you, but, but in a moment, Matea, I want you to, we're going to close out by you sharing with the, with the folks what they can do to make a difference. I want you to share some wisdom, maybe some resources that they can connect with, some resources that, that you're connected with. But before we get to that, and you're going to want to hear that, you want to know what you can do and how specifically you can pray. Listen, guys, we're about to have one of the most prophetic events of the year 
right here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we want you to be a part of it. Now, one of the things I'm going to be doing to equip you for this, here's what we're praying for, a John the Baptist moment where we prepare the way for a mighty Azusa Street outpouring that will be here on the East Coast, and I believe there's another one happening on the West Coast, and they're going to come together in a mighty awakening in this nation. But we're going to begin doing a couple webinars. We're going to do several webinars absolutely free with some of my guest speakers. And you've heard the guest speakers. We've got Lou Engel, Jeremiah Johnson, uh, Troy Brewer, Larry and Mercedes Sparks, um, Emma Stark, Jesse and Parker Green. And I'm going to be bringing them on some of these webinars with me, and it's going to be a Zoom. So we can see your face. You can see our face. We can talk. We can disciple you. We can pour out what's in our heart in preparation for that. These are going to be absolutely free, these Zoom webinars. All you have to do is go sign up for our email list. And I believe the link is in the description for you to be able to do that. So you go to EncounterToday.com and sign up for our e-newsletter. And everyone who's on the e-newsletter will get the Zoom invite when it's time. I think we'll do one around December the 7th will be our first one. We'll let you know soon when that's going to be. But go ahead and get on the newsletter now so we can send that information to you. And we're believing for the provision of God through God's people to make this event happen. If you could go to ncrevival.com, that's ncrevival.com, and click the donate button, we would greatly appreciate it. Help us make this event possible. so into revival and become a forerunner in the name of Jesus. And for the rest of our church family, those of you that are part of ECC, it's time for this evening's tithes and offerings. Go to EncounterToday.com and give as you're led by the Holy Spirit. If you're not a part of the Encounter Today family, we've got a book we want to send you just to thank you for a gift of any size. So when you go to EncounterToday.com, you click on the special offer tab and uh, we're going to send you a book just to be a blessing to you. Now, let's go back to Matea. What are some things that we can do moving forward to make a difference with what's happening in the Supreme Court? How can we pray? And what are some resources that, oh, Michelle says, pay 200 toward terminal today. God bless you. God bless you. Seriously, we are a small ministry in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, and we're about to have an event like this, and we're only able to do it because, really, because of you, Michelle. And I'm saying that in all sincerity because of every single person who stands with us to help us bring the church back to Christ. That's all we're asking. Stand in faith with us. Help us bring the church back to Christ. All right, Matea, how can we make a difference? What kind of resources can we connect with moving forward? Absolutely. This is my favorite question ever because it's activation. Yes. And this is where people have impact. So, of course, first and foremost, we are going to pray. And FRC Family Research Council, if you go over to their Instagram, their Facebook, their website, you will see strategic ways and things that you can be praying for, sending your faith to with regards to this case. Uh, we can also connect with groups like Live Action, Susan B. Anthony. Uh, there's so many different regional and state uh, research councils. So if you type in, for example, Virginia Family Research Council or Washington State Family Research Council, you'll be able to of connect directly with your local or state uh, uh, provider of pro-life information, what's happening in your specific state and community, which is key. We can, we can see what's happening all across the world, have an international or national lens in which we view things, but to actually understand what's happening locally and to take local action, that's how you have a long-lasting impact. Hmm. Also, please, please, please write in to your elected representatives, whether they're on the state and um, federal level, they need to hear from you. You don't have to have a long legal sized email going out and stating your support of this law, of being pro-life and encouraging um, various elected representatives to stand for life. You can just say, my name is so-and-so, my name is Matea Murda, and I stand in support of life and in support of pro-life legislation. That's Please it. vote in favor of whatever pro-life bill is on the table. That is key. And, and encourage your elected representatives. They need that encouragement because you know what? Whether it's your local school board or it's, it's uh, your federal elected representative dealing with these issues, they need that encouragement to continue to stand because they don't get that on our side, very often anyway. So often they are thrown negative emails and, and 
call giving negative calls all the time by individuals on the other side who are who are anti-life who are pro-abortion so you encouraging them is going to embolden them to stand both today and in the future uh you can also i'll finish with this you can also comment on various um online publications who are pushing an anti-life message, comment online, comment on Facebook, show your support of pro-life legislation, uh, put up a pro-life graphic. If you see something come out from live action or someone else, uh, share their graphics. Make sure that you are voicing your support in your own sphere of influence because that's gonna stir questions to be asked and we are to give an answer for the hope we have. So what a better way to have impact than in your own sphere of influence. I love it practical things that you can do listen don't just lean on the lazy theological understanding of the sovereignty of god and just hope it all works out when you as you bury your head in the sand let's take action let's make a difference evan you wanted to share yes something. i've got a really cool announcement so i've been looking through the comments of course and rebecca just gave a super chat for fifty dollars oh thank you rebecca yes thank you so much for that rebecca and if you're in the comments if you're in the chat if you're watching on the replay um, our team, myself included, go back through the comments and look through prayer requests. We pray through prayer requests, as many as we can get to. So put your prayer requests in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. We want to stand in faith with you. And I saw that Michelle said, I'm giving $1,000. Listen, we're, we're, then we're going to send you an appeal to heaven flag for helping us make. If you Listen, guys, if you want to be a forerunner, for those who sow $1,000 or more, we're going to be sending you toward NC Revival. We're going to be sending you an appeal to heaven flag at the end of the terminal event, as well as a T-shirt with your name on it, thanking you for, for being a part of this event. We're going to tell everybody in the whole wide world that you made this event possible. Every way I can, I'm going to put your name on every public publication that we put out in this event because without you it wouldn't be possible you just go to ncrevival.com and click the donate button and for every gift of a thousand dollars or more we're going to send you that beautiful appeal to heaven flag matea any final words before we leave people here tonight absolutely honestly this is such this is an open door for christians mm -hmm. to have an impact in this case over 50 million just in the United States babies, preborn babies have been killed because of Roe versus Wade being legalized, legalizing abortion in all 50 states. So if we can set our faith towards something, this is going to have a legal decision in June. Let's set it to this because the, the shedding of innocent blood, God, God sees every one of those children who, who dies because of abortion. And we have a legal obligation with heaven to stick, stand up for their lives. So stand a defense of this, of this on social media. Talk about it with your friends and family. And, and take a stand in, in your private time. Take this to God and lay it at his feet. And we are going to see a Roe versus Wade taken down. Come it belongs on. in the dustbin of history. And that's what I'm setting my faith to. How can people connect with you, Matea? How can they connect with your ministry? And you're launching a new ministry now, aren't you? I am. I'm very excited. It's called Vote Family. And we're standing in defense of Canada's families and in defense of life. Anything intersecting with family, we are, we are going to be right there in the thick of it. So we're launching that. And you can see our website, votefamily.com.ca. And also you can go to Instagram. Everything is at Matea Murda. Same with Twitter and Facebook and everything else. So your Instagram I'm there. Account reach is out to me. Really, your Instagram account is tremendously educational. Everybody should follow you on Instagram. It, we'll put the link in the description of this video. You are a tremendous blessing, and I'm excited about Vote Family. I don't know how you got that URL, votefamily.com. That's awesome. It is awesome. It was It was actually, there was a huge uh, battle to get that, but we got it, and God came through, so he came clutch. I believe clutch. it. I believe it. Well, we can't thank you enough for your stand for life, for your stand for righteousness. Somebody say thank you in the comments for this amazing woman of faith, this woman of God. And uh, we'll have you back real soon if you'll come back. I'm always open to it. Love connecting with you all. Awesome. Thank you. Well, all of you, thank you for watching. Thank you for being an active member of this society. Thank you for being the Church of Jesus Christ. It's coming, said. I just donated. Thank you so much for your donation, just for standing in faith with us. We are a community of believers. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this message and get it out as far and wide as you possibly can on every social media site that you possess. And we're going to continue standing for righteousness right here on your encounter today. God bless. This is
is war in the camp of the enemy who has hoodwinked the church for too long about where the boundaries of the kingdoms are. If the house is a people and we're praying for a move of God, but we don't move, we are actually working against the very thing we're praying for. Yes. Every problem that's in the earth, there's a strategy in heaven for it. And the question is, are you reaching up and pulling that wisdom down? Mm. Are you asking for it? Because that's a form of prophetic. And if you're gonna be the church, if you're gonna be the temple of God, if you're gonna be the bride of Christ, you're gonna to have to be able to examine yourself be able to examine your life, be able to examine your house, and when you have something in it that's causing you to serve another God, you're gonna to have to clean your house. The one who died and then rose again three days later by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he holds the keys to death and Hades in his hands, and he says, you are mine. Do you have one foot in the world? and one foot in the kingdom, and you're trying to do this balancing act and it's not working any longer. It's time to jump in and go all in. You came here because God is trying to tell you, stop playing it safe. Stop keeping your cards close. Stop swimming with the current of society. I am looking for people this morning who are gonna swim upstream. I am determined if it takes me 20 years, we're going to get the glory of God on this city and it will touch the whole world. Go ahead and let the skeptic, let the unbeliever know, let those dead in tradition know what they feared the most is about to happen. We about to find our voice.